Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. Today we're going to be heading onto the M4 to do a motorway or highway test of the autopilot system. This is the final 2018 system, 2018 50.6 or something like that. Uh, and I just wanna see how good it is now on the motorway. So I do quite a bit of motorway driving, I'm not gonna lie, and autopilot is a feature that I use a lot on the motorways. It's always something that I enjoy testing, I just enjoy using, and I think it makes the, the trip in general a lot more fun and I don't know just a lot nicer so we're going to give it a go here we've joined up uh, with our speed set to 70 which is the max speed limit and I'm using the auto lane change there to change lanes and stick at this lane here we've actually got a police car ahead of us by the looks of it so I think a lot of people are going to be cramming here and sl like slamming on and slowing down soon um, so we'll keep we'll keep an eye out for that but just so you know the Tesla autopilot system can definitely go up past 70. There is, There was it going uh, 90, for an example, bring that back down to the speed limit. So you can go up to 90 using autopilot. And I'm not gonna show you that here because obviously I will probably get into some sort of trouble, but I'm telling you right now, it works. And it works actually very, very well at 90 miles an hour, uh, just so you know. Anyway, using the auto lane change again. You do have to flick it on and off yourself, which is kind of annoying. I would like it to do that on its own, but that's not quite there yet. And it doesn't do any of the decisions itself. So on this software, it's still, you have to kind of activate everything. Whereas I believe on the newer ones, uh, or on the new software, it does it kind of itself. So like here, I'm gonna kind of prematurely guess that we're catching up to these lorries. Obviously doing my checks, there's no one around us and it just merges into that lane very, very nicely. So you can see the auto uh, steering or whatever you, auto lane change, sorry, works really well. And no, no kind of quarrels with it on a normal day like today, just using it in a normal situation. But when it gets pretty hectic, like now, I don't know what it's gonna do with that lorry. Oh no, no problems. It still did it absolutely fine. And we can tootle on forwards like this. Oh, it wasn't a police car, it was an ambulance. So everyone's gonna slam on, read ambulance, and then they're gonna floor it again. Because that, <laughs> that is what everyone does when they see a police car or anything with like hazards on it around here. We're getting a little bit of wobble actually just then, which I'm not sure why. I have done this route to Bristol a lot, so I do know this motorway very, very well. And we rarely, when I'm using autopilot, rarely get issues with it if I'm being totally honest. Okay, so I'm gonna go left and get into this lane. Like that, there we go. And I'm actually gonna pull it back a bit just because we've got these uh, Vs on the road. I think they're called Chevrons. And I think they say stay two apart. So there should be, you should be able to see two in the middle of your cars, I believe is, is like the general term. So you can see roughly two, two chevrons in between our cars and I think that is correct. We're actually slowing down a bit here, so I'm gonna go into the right-hand lane again to get up to 70. So the car there took a little minute to decide whether it was safe or not to go. Once it decided it was safe, it happily went over into that line without a problem. I'm gonna say that I think some cars think I'm an undercover police. My Tesla is all black and like the windows are black, everything's really black and I've got loads of camera equipment on the car and I think people floor it past me then slam on. Uh, and they go then 70 like this Audi did ahead of me because they're, they're worried that I'm like tracking them with this camera or something. But you can see that it's identifying what is a van. So obviously that van is showing uh, as a van on there. It doesn't show the first, uh, the slow lane, the normal lane, um, or the bus lane or the lorry lane, whatever you want to call it, because I don't think it's of relevance. So it just doesn't bother showing it. It does show the middle lane, however, because obviously we need to see what is in the middle lane. But we're staying very nice, very central of this lane, even though we're going around the corners. 
no big problems at all. Now, the reason I chose this part of the M4 is this here. Uh, we're actually coming up to an area that I will be pulling off because I'll be going to Cribs Causeway and it gets a little bit complicated there, but I wanted to see how the Tesla autopilot system works itself on that kind of setup as well. That's nice. That's a way nicer road. Why aren't all roads like this? This just shows as well, going the speed limit, how slow you are compared to everybody else. In that car there, there were two white, like as in white haired ladies, old ladies. I don't know what to call that. I was gonna say gran grannies, but uh, they might not be grannies. Um, and bless them, they're overtaking me. It's a little bit questionable when you come around a bend and you're trying to change lane. It doesn't seem to just go into the lane. It does this kind of floaty thing, which confused this BMW ahead of us, for sure. Um, I'm not sure if that's why he's overtaking and slamming on and now going left. That to me seemed utterly pointless, but that's BMWs for you. I, I have no idea what that achieved at all, but awesome job. Uh, let's see, I bet you it's a white collar business. Yeah, it is. It's the whitest white guy in his suit, probably racing off to his job. So good on you, my friend. <laughs> anyway, so we're coming up to this, which is the, the smart section of the motorway. Smart, they say. Basically, it's a, a cash scheme for them to make money off you when they change the speed limit like that and catch you. I've been caught here uh, once before and I have no idea how, because I, I don't normally speed through here. So we also sometimes here get to use the hard shoulder. So we've got a hard shoulder, but you can sometimes drive on it. And I'm intrigued to see if it's gonna let us today, because if it does, I will go on the hard shoulder and just see what the car makes of it all. I'm actually gonna tuck up as well. I'm gonna go to three down here because I do need it to get a little bit closer to cars and stuff. No, so you see the big yellow sign up ahead that's saying that the hard shoulder is not in use today. So sadly, we can't go up the hard shoulder and use that. Okay, I'm slamming on and I, I don't know why. That just completely slammed on. Really strange. And I'm slowing down again. Oh, this is going, this is going actually a little bit funny and I, I'm not 100% sure why. Now, I want to say it's the overhead gantries and the bridges and stuff. I think they cause the system every now and then to slow down or slam on or anything like that. But it may have been the, the lorry next to us being too close. I'm not sure. The cars are all swapping lanes in front of us, so the car's struggling a little bit. But that's fine. We're leaving a nice amount of space in front of us. But we just want to kind of sit behind this van here. We've actually got that lorry has done the same thing that that BMW has done and is now going around onto the third lane. Which I'm pretty sure lorries aren't allowed on the third lane. But then again, this goes into two and a one, so maybe they are, I'm not sure. Actually, I'm gonna put that rear camera up just so you can see like what's coming up behind. Okay, now we're actually going left, so I do need to go into that left lane. Now I'm gonna wait for that car to get nice in front, and now I'm gonna pick to go into that left lane and see what the car thinks of it. Yeah, it likes to look at that. So it just slots straight in. No problems. And we carry on our way. I'm not quite sure actually why we were going so slow. I'm pretty sure it was this van here just slow, like slowing everyone down. But some people do like to go slow. And we can actually go now into this left lane if we want because the hard shoulder uh, actually disappears and turns into, into this. So this is now going at the speed limit. Now, obviously, because we're on our own kind of lane here, we can, uh, this isn't classed as undertaking. Plus, I'm going the speed limit, so it doesn't really matter. But we're going down this way on the A38. Or at least we're following this road to the A38. We're actually coming off onto the M5 in a minute. But this is where it gets confusing for the car. So, obviously, I have to navigate it through this at the moment. Just going to pull it down to 65 around these corners because it does get quite fast. It's actually slammed on to 60 out of its own choice, which is interesting. But it's been able to do these fine. Yeah, no problem with all these. And then that Audi is completely cutting straight across, but no problem. I mean, there wasn't a problem. He's completely in his right to do that. Now I need to change lanes over here. 
I actually want to get all the way over to this right lane, but I don't know if it's going to activate it in time. Oh no, it has done it. And then here, and now this is going to be a little bit of a test because we're actually joining this lane. But yeah, it did it very nicely. And it's not actually meant to do that, by the way. That's just using the system as it is. And it did it really, really well. In the new, in the new software update, it does that completely by itself. Uh, and, you know, it shows you what road it's about to take, etc., etc. Whereas that just did it all by itself uh, really, really well. I'm getting in the left lane here, not only because I can see that the speed is slowing down ahead of us, but we are going left to Cribs Causeway in a minute. And we're actually going to this supercharger here, which has two of two stalls available, which is brilliant. So we're going to get our charge up uh, there, which is nice. And what I might do actually is here is where the, the service center is for Tesla. I think I'm going to go to the service center and just see if I can connect to their Wi-Fi and see if it will push me the new update because apparently it does that. Apparently. I'm not sure if it actually does, but that is apparently what it can do sometimes. So we've got a mile until our next exit. And autopilot here has worked so, so well. Like no issues at all. Really nice to use. You know, it just gives you, gives you that confidence when it works so much better and it, it just has worked really well and it gives you that confidence that full self-drive potentially could work with this uh suite that we've got at the moment with i think this is hardware 2.0 not even the 2.5 which tesla have said is actually 2.1 but apparently I, i'm not sure what's changed apparently just some harnesses have changed and um stuff like that so we're going to be coming off left here now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to slow down to 50 uh, because I can see that that sign up there says that I need to slow down to 50. But I'm slowing down anyway, and I'm going to be taking a left as soon as this hard shoulder ends, which is right there. So we're going to be now taking a left, and it won't do it. It's refusing. There we go. Now it will do it. So you can see because of the hard lane before, it was actually refusing to go into that left lane. But then as soon as the lane broke open into this kind of like dotted spectrum almost, it then was fine for you to, to use this left lane as you should um, for Cribs Causeway. Now, I do know that at the end of this road where it, it splits off, it is going to get a little bit funny. But that is just, I think, um, what it does. See here, because it goes so wide, is we get a little bit of a, a question of where it's going to go. I think it was going to go into that right lane, if I'm being honest. So I took over uh, control and we'll sit in this left lane just like so. We'll actually autopilot all the way up to the, the supercharger. And we could sit in this traffic here, but I'm just going to come out of it and go around it because I know that we can do that. And hopefully we'll miss this set of lights. Oh, they just turned. This Mazda's just cut in. And there we go. That was nice. Look at that. Front of the queue. That's what we like to see. And again, of course, because it doesn't read lights, we can't use it in this kind of setup just yet uh, because it would it would have just carried straight on. Yes, I do like to uh, not floor it, but go pretty fast at the speed limit because it's an electric car. It's just one of the most fun things to do in an electric car is that you can just take off in front of everybody. It's lovely. Okay, I'm actually going to just cross over here into this lane. See, now these kind of roads kind of question how autopilot or full self-drive is going to work because the lanes and lines are there, but we don't really use them for that because we just kind of go where we're going, whereas a car will have to follow something specific. So I'm not sure how it's going to work on these kind of things, but hopefully it'll do it'll do a good job. This goes quite wide here, but no problems with it. 
and then this is our destination. So that was a really good motorway drive and a little bit of off motorway, a little bit of kind of different, uh, you know, a different scenario. And it has worked really, really well. So what does it need to do next to make auto, auto drive or autopilot so good on motorways? Well, it needs to obviously lane change by itself. It needs to decide where it's coming off and going on, but I believe it already does that in the new update. I'm just waiting to get it. Uh, it needs to regulate speed a little bit better. It needs to overtake a bit better. It needs to un undertake when obviously acceptable and stuff like that. It just needs a little bit more of a personality. It needs a driving personality. I have read that apparently there's a Mad Max mode coming out where the car will drive more aggressively. And I actually think that's a really good idea. Obviously, I don't want it to be too extreme. Uh, but I do think we need a little bit more aggressive driving from the autopilot system and hopefully that will give us just that. So now we're in here and you know it's it's a car park so you do your window down and rev. Oh <laughs> and we are here at the Tesla parking. There's only two bays but literally I, I don't think I've ever seen this full. It's always just me in here. But there we go. I hope you guys have all enjoyed this video. If you want to see more stuff, comment down below what you want to see. And until next time, thank you for watching. Drive safe.